right, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the 2025 AHR Expo. So I'm spending some time with Matt Lacey from AUX Aux. Aux. Okay, so I've been following this product. Of all of their products that you've been bringing to the market, and we've got another one we're going to dive into in a little bit. Right now, I really want to talk about your inverter product line, especially from like the installation side, yes. right? It's been a, time, a lot of time in the installation side of our industry. Installation ease is so important. It is. Okay. That's so right. tell me a little bit about your air handler, and then we'll talk about the inverter as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it was designed with the contractor in mind. Okay. So the indoor unit, once you get take the front two panels off, yeah. you can pull the whole blower assembly out with just two screws. So okay. two screws on the top yeah, right here, absolutely. pull the whole blower out. You can inspect it. If you need right. to replace it, yep. it makes it very easy to replace. Easy to remove. Okay. The control board. Yeah, I noticed that. Like, okay, right Very easy to access the control board. It's right up front. It's facing you. Yeah. All the contacts are right there, easily readable. Okay. So you plug in your wires, make your connections. Yeah. You don't have to look around a corner, stick your head, try to stick your head inside the unit. Right. Very easy to access. Okay, ECM variable speed. ECM variable speed, yep. Okay, and this is an R32 system. It's all R32. So we've got our A2L mitigation sensor. Yep. Built Yes. Here. Yep. Now, so you've got your uh, refrigerant detection control strategy built already into it the is. control board. Already done. So there's no secondary control board to be utilized, which I've None seen required. That's right. in, in some of our intermediate equipment designs. And a single plug on the refrigerant detection sensor. And it's actually in a very good location. I've had a lot, of, um, a lot of contractors ask me about why the sensor is so low into the drain pan in many locations because the question always comes up. What if my coil gets iced up? That's right. my refrigerant detection yeah. sensor going to have a concern. Yeah. And so by removing it from that, but still being in the airstream, it, it's kind of a very neutral location for that. That's right. And that's exactly yeah. right. You want it in the airstream yeah. of the unit, right? So obviously this is in a, a tough flow configuration. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that's the right location for where you'd want that sensor. Okay. Electronic expansion valve, a uh, communicating thermostat. So it's all, it's all 24 volt out of oh, the box. Really? Yeah, non We do ship it with our own thermostat. Sure. Okay. But if you want to use your favorite 24 volt thermostat, yeah. absolutely can do that right out of the right. box. So I've got a home automation system. It's got its control. That's I can right. actually use a full inverter. Let's step over and talk about that inverter just for yep. a second too. Yep. So we are talking about, uh, of course, DC inverter. What is the capacity rating on this one? So this is a 60,000 BTU system. Yep. About 16 sear is the lowest, up yeah. to 19.2 sear. And what kind of heating capacity are we talking with this? Um, so like how low can we operate it? So the lowest operation for our cold climate version of this is down to negative 22. Yeah, that's really good. Which okay. is really good for the yeah. northern states. Yeah, absolutely. 100% um, capacity at 5 degrees on most of the systems. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. And that's really important. So we start looking at heating capabilities, especially in inverters. Like that's We right. can use AHRI tables and look at 5 degrees, but, you know, with units that can operate below five degrees, it's like, okay, we got some serious performance That's right. that we need to take into consideration when we're doing our design. So That's right. I'm a big fan of what we're doing in the inverter world. Oh, me too. And I'm, I'm grateful to be able to spend some time with you. I encourage you all to learn a little bit more about AUX Aux and what are bringing to the industry. And then I think we should go take a look at a product that you're really want to gonna see next. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, Matt, thanks for joining me again. Yep. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of people in the industry think that I'm crazy <laughs> about the next generation of equipment for yeah. our industry because we're going to have to start using a different mindset, right? right? When we talk about, especially like the A2L transition, which we're talking about an R454B unit, one of our A2L refrigerants. Correct. When we start talking about that, the reason that we've struggled going to A2Ls is because of that mildly flammable component. Remember, like things like R32 and 454B, right? That R32 base is actually half of R410A. That's, that's like, right. We didn't go to R30, R32 because of its flammability in the 90s. So we did R125 on top of it. We got 410, blah, blah, blah. So at some point, we're going to start having to look outside of the box. It took all this time to get regulations to bring A2Ls into the environment because we have refrigerant between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. Right. That was the whole reason that we had the building code updates. Well, what if all the refrigerant was outside? Yeah. Okay. Now let's think about that. Like, we're in the business of moving heat. That's right. How do we move heat? In all sorts of ways. So if we think about an air to water solution, where my high performance inverter, just like we were talking about with our traditional split system, right. but it's all in one all unit. In one unit yep. And we're using that technology and that efficiency to transfer the heat from the air into water. And well, what are the options with that water? It's like, it's almost endless. Endless, that's right. Yeah, so I can I can run that hot water or cool water that's to right. an indoor coil. That's right. right. I mean, that's all we were doing before is moving heat from the outside to the inside. That's right. Well, what if I, I can even take out those copper line sets, use PEX, PEX. between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit, 
It's all low pressure. That's right. And I'm just transferring heat. That's it. Okay. What about domestic water? Yeah, you can do domestic hot water as well. Okay. So what's the different terms for these air to water, mono block, yeah. variety of terms. That's right. Yep. But what we're doing is exactly what you're saying here. That's right. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the capabilities of an air to water solution for a home. Yeah, it's, I mean, you said it's endless possibilities. I mean, yeah. the reality is you can do forced air, right. heating and cooling. Yeah. You can do radiators for existing homes that have radiators. That are already there. You can yeah, just got an existing hot water system. Tap Hydronics. right into that. You can do radiant heating. Of course, we don't do radiant cooling, but you can do radiant, radiant heating if that's heating. an option yeah, you want to do in your home. I would have valves zoning all this absolutely. off anyhow. So in the wintertime, I could use that radiant heating for slab, driveway, that's whatever right. I was using for. That's exactly the rest right. Of the time. And I can now use my heat to put it wherever I need it. That's exactly right. Uh, so that satisfies, to your point, the space conditions, but then we could also tap in and do hot water. Yeah. So we have an option for an additional tank, right. take care of all domestic hot water, yeah. space heating, domestic hot water, all in one. Exactly. So combine all your systems from your heat pump water heater or your gas water heater, yeah. from your gas furnace into one system. And it solves so many of the problems that we had so in the many. refrigerant transition. That's right. We're going to have another refrigerant transition That's down the road, right? right? That's right. A2Ls are like an intermediate product. That's right. That's so another right. 10 years, 12 years from now, yep. we're going to be looking at what solutions can we do then. Yeah. Well, if we have already moved the refrigerant to the outdoor unit, I can go with any Anything. other refrigerant we have. That's right. And the building codes are simply going to look at it and go, what's well, outside of the that's structure. Outside. That's right. Yeah, that, that, that's out there in the same place that I already have 20 pounds of propane sitting in the grill. That's the right. The same distance away from the building. That's right. And I'm more huh. comfortable having a contractor pipe yeah. water than refrigerant, than refrigerant anyways. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And so, as we mentioned, there's actually a next generation of these yes. that are going to be using R290. That's right. Right. So, the solutions are endless and the capability that it gives us as contractors yeah. and technicians and instructors, it's limitless. Oh, it really is. I absolutely love this idea. I mean, the R290 system with the potential leaving water temperature of 180 degrees yeah. gives you so much flexibility. Wow. So I'm I'm very, very excited for that yeah. change. Very excited for it. Me too. I know people think I'm crazy when I talk about this, but <laughs> we got to be realistic. That's right? true. Yep. We're going to run out of HFC refrigerants. We will. Yep. Our GWP has to get down. It does. This will get us lower. It and does, then when yep. we need to go even lower than that, down to zero to like 290 or yep. CO2 of one, well, no big deal. We'll just yep. put the refrigerant outside. 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 Oh. I'm grateful for you. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Appreciate it.